In today's lesson, we are discussing BEM's gender schema theory. We will learn about gender, schemas, Sandra BEM's theory, and the BSRI. Dr. Sandra BEM received her PhD in developmental psychology from the University of Michigan in 1967. During her career, Dr. BEM taught and researched at Carnegie Mellon University, Stanford University, and Cornell University. Her research focused primarily on the social construction of gender and sexuality, childhood development, and psychological androgyny. In the 1970s, Ben began to question the cognitive development theories of Jean Piaget and Lawrence Kohlberg. She felt they neglected to answer why gender was so important to young children, especially in terms of their socialization. Ben wanted to know why children organized themselves based on their gender rather than other identifying characteristics, such as their race or religion. She argued that gender was not naturally more important to children and wanted to know what caused this behavior. So first of all, what is gender? Gender is the way that society categorizes and differentiates between male and female. From very early on, society, from parents to teachers to the media, begin to influence a child's perception of what is boy and what is girl. Thus, a child can tell you what is stereotypically associated as being female or being male. Masculinity is usually associated with qualities like self-reliance, dominance, and strength, while femininity is usually associated with qualities like submissiveness, dependence, and emotionality. Remember, gender is a social construction. And now let's talk about what a schema is. A schema is a pattern or framework for categorizing and processing information. They allow for more efficient processing of incoming information by helping you recall or readily perceive associations that are schema consistent while also ignoring what is not schema consistent. BEM's gender schema theory incorporates cognitive developmental theory and social learning theory to explain the way that children learn what it means to be a boy or a girl. The theory explains the process by which children learn to categorize information about gender and how they incorporate their self-concept into these gender-based categories. Gender schemas are developed in early childhood. Parents, school, and the media teach children the way gender is defined by society, including the anatomy, roles, and characteristics of the genders. This binary categorization system becomes their gender schema. They are able to process new information through this schema, and they associate girl with feminine things and boy with masculine things. When they develop the gender schema, they incorporate themselves into the schema. This is called a self-schema. They link themselves with the elements of the gender in which they feel they belong. This is how boys decide that they are going to do boy things and reject doing girl things, and vice versa. By acting in schema-consistent ways, they are rewarded by society, parents, and peers. This reinforces the schema and the behavior. BEM created her gender schema theory in 1981, following the development of the BEM sex role inventory used to measure the extent to which a person subscribes to the stereotypical masculine and feminine characteristics. In the following slides, we will talk about BEM's sex role inventory, or BSRI. The purpose of BSRI is to determine how closely an individual reflects the culture's definition of maleness and femaleness in their own self-descriptions. The BSRI consists of 60 traits or characteristics, each of which are categorized as masculine, feminine, or neutral. Without knowledge of this gender categorization, BSRI participants are asked to rank each characteristic as descriptive of themselves from 1 through 7, 1 meaning almost never, and 7 almost always. The BSRI does not consider gender to be binary and does not consist of only male and female. BSRI measurement results will indicate one of four possible classifications, masculine, feminine, androgynous, or undifferentiated. These classifications tell us more about an individual's sex typing. Sex typing determines how much a person has applied gender schema to him or herself. Bem argued that sex-typed individuals process information in gender-linked ways. For example, if a man scores high in masculinity and low in femininity, he would be identified as masculine by gender and therefore is sex-typed. Sex-typed inv individuals are more likely to regulate their personal behavior to meet the standards set forth by society. 
Sex-typed individuals demonstrate consistency between their sex and what society deems appropriate for their gender. A sex-typed man might show traits such as independence, aggression, or dominance. A sex-typed woman might show female traits such as sympathy, understanding, and affection. Both a sex-typed man and woman interpret gender to be an important way of defining their own attributes and behaviors. BSRI results show three other categories in terms of sex typing. All non-sex typed individuals put significantly less importance on using gender as a way to define attributes or behaviors. A cross-sex type individual would be, for example, a woman who scores high in masculine and low in feminine according to BSRI. This woman would not reflect society's definition of feminine onto herself. She still considers herself to be female, however, the impact of gender schema on her attitudes about herself is much less substantial than the impact of the gender schema on a sex-typed group. A cross-sex type woman might view herself as a strong leader and competitor more so than a sex-type woman would. Again, men can also be cross-sex typed. A stay-at-home dad who's sympathetic, warm, and nurturing might be cross-sex type, but doesn't believe he's any less of a man than men who are sex typed. It's important to keep in mind that being a cross-sex typed individual has no effect on a person's sexuality. It's about the way in which they project gender schema onto themselves. The third classification is known as androgynous. This is when an individual, either man or woman, scores high in both masculinity and femininity. Again, this has no implications for the individual's sexuality. The example of the stay-at-home dad from before could be androgynous based on the attributes he possesses. Perhaps in addition to being a stay-at-home dad and raising the children, he's also very athletic and competitive, traits that are generally associated with the masculine gender. Additionally, a successful businesswoman who is strong and aggressive at work could also be warm and sensitive with her children and family. The sex type of, e of these individuals, androgynous, just means that they do not engage in gender schematic processing as much as sex typed individuals. Lastly, individuals who score low in both masculine and feminine are measured as undifferentiated. Undifferentiated individuals possess a gender that they self-identify with neutral word words in the BSRI more strongly than with either masculine or feminine words. Those neutral characteristics can be possessed by both men and women and consist of qualities like happy, friendly, conceited, or jealous. An undifferentiated person is also much less likely to use gender schema to regulate their own behavior and attributes. So in conclusion, today we talked about schemas, BEM's gender schema theory, and the BEM sex role inventory. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.